The movie begins with Nikki, a seasoned con artist having dinner at fancy restaurant alone. Nearby, Jess, an inexperienced grifter is talking with an old man getting annoyed and trying to get rid of him. Nikki notices her. She also notices Nikki alone and goes to him saying to an old man that her friend is waiting at a nearby table. Nikki and Jess meet and greet each other and talk to each other for a long time. After a long conversation they go to a hotel room and have a romantic night. Jess tries to seduce and con him with a fake jealous husband. But Nikki being experienced in that field he catches them. When they fail, Nikki advises them never to lose focus when faced with unexpected situations. He follows Jess, convincing her to have drinks. Nikki tells her how his father Bucky shot his grandfather in a standoff, explaining the Toledo panic button tactic in which you shoot your partner to show your loyalty. Then the movie cuts to the scene where Nikki is going to New Orleans. There, Nikki meets his crew member, Horst. They discuss their new plan and how they can carry their new plan. In the following scene, Jess arrives in the restaurant where Nikki is having coffee. Apparently it seems Jess follows Nikki to New Orleans. Jess is upset that Nikki left her and doesn't let her work with him. She keeps persuading him to take her under his wing, where she also meets Horst. Then she comes to know that she has already been added in their group. In the next scene, we see Jess being taught to steal a few pockets, watches and valuable items as a test along with Nikki's other members in the festival. Jess impresses Nikki and soon she is added in their new plan. Nikki shows Jess their other sides of their work, how they work, where they work and how they are doing, and Nikki introduces Farhad, Nikki's another member to Jess. Over the course of time, Nikki and Jess develop a romantic relationship upsetting Nikki, whose father taught him to never become emotionally involved with colleagues. Nikki and Jess go to the Super Bowl with the money their crew have earned. At the Super Bowl, Nikki and Jess get into a round of bets after being bored of watching game. Soon gamblers say notices them and joins in their game of betting. After a few rounds of betting, Nikki and Say get into a round of increasingly extravagant bets, eventually losing all of the money the crew has earned. To win it back, Nikki bets double and nothing and asks Say to pick any player on or off the field and has just guessed the number picked to make it difficult. Say agrees to him and lets Jess guess the picked number. Distraught, Jess scans the field, sees Farhad wearing jersey number 55, and soon realizes it is another con. Jess guesses number 55 to which Say gets impressed and gives Nikki double the money that they have lost earlier. Nikki and Jess leave the arena with the money they have won from betting. Nikki later explains how Say had been programmed to pick 55 from his arrival, with subtle, subliminal prompts throughout his day. Nikki leaves Jess with her cut and instructs the driver to take her to the airport. Jess seems surprised and her excitement turns to sadness when Nikki behaves like that. She cries as her limo drives off as he goes out into another waiting car. Three years later, in Buenos Aires Nikki goes to work for billionaire motorsport team owner Rafael Garriga. As Garriga wants to beat Australian businessman McEwen's team in the championship, Nikki will pretend to be Garriga's team's disgruntled technician who's willing to sell his custom fuel using algorithm EXR. Instead, he will sell McEwen a bogus version which will actually slow their car down. At a pre-race party, Nikki runs into Jess, who is now with Garriga. After heavy drinking upon seeing Jess, Nikki has a convincing public fight with Garriga and after being thrown out, is recruited by McEwen to provide the component. The next day while Jess comes out of doing shopping she sees a woman dropping out her purse in the bus stand. She quickly picks up and tries to give it but it was too late. So she check out the purse and finds the woman's ID stating her address. She goes to the address where she finds Nikki waiting for her. Nikki tells her he couldn't forget her and wants her back but Jess tricks this time and leaves. Nikki begins pursuing Jess again. This time he sends Farhad to talk to Jess and Farhad convinces her to meet and talk to Nikki and tells her the truth. Jess meets with Nikki and they eventually rekindle their relationship. The head of Gariga's security entourage Owens is suspicious about Nikki and Jess' relationship. He even goes to Nikki and checks his hotel room but narrowly misses catching them together. Nikki not only delivers the real component to McEwen for 3 million euros but also sells it to the other teams for similar amounts. With the money collected by selling components Nikki plans to flee with Jess to the US. But before Nikki and Jess can return to the US together, they are caught by Gariga's men. Jess is bound and her mouth is taped shut whilst Nikki is beaten. Gariga is convinced that she helped Nikki gain access to EXR, so begins to suffocate her. To save Jess, Nikki explains that he tricked her into believing he still had feelings for her and the necklace he had given her secretly recorded Gariga's password and login information. Jess was conned and knew nothing about it. However, she then reveals she was only trying to seduce Gariga to steal his valuable watch but had not actually got close enough to Gariga for Nikki's story to be true. 
Nikki then promises to come clean to spare Jess's life, but Owen shoots him in the chest, causing a horrified Gariga to leave. Owens then reveals himself to be Bucky, Nikki's father, and assures Jess that he avoided any major arteries by employing the Toledo panic button. He then tapes up Nikki's wounds and draws excess blood from his lung with a syringe so he can breathe. They flee from the garage in Gariga's vehicle. Bucky drives Nikki and Jess to the hospital to treat Nikki's punctured lung. Before he drops them off, he reveals why he's left him on the streets. During a poker deal in Boston, he had a gun pulled on him, and all he could think about then was Nikki. He then walked away and never looked back. After emphasizing that love will get one killed in the game, Bucky departs with all the money as a reminder of the consequences of losing focus. After he leaves, Nikki notices that Jess snatched Gariga's $200,000 watch, and a smiling Nikki and Jess walk towards the hospital entrance together. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.